Hi everyone, Simon here again. So, secrets of a bar manager. Uh, mine was in Patea, but all bars. Uh, go go bars, not sure, but no. All beer bars, managers, have to do certain things just to survive day to day in the job. Biggest secret. If you're sat, if you were sat in a bar as a manager, from say first thing in the morning, 10, 11 o'clock, right through the day and early hours of the morning, two, three, four in the morning, customers are coming in buying you drinks all the time. Now, if you say no to the customers, you're losing money because you're losing beer sales, and you're not going to cover your salary. So the number one rule as a bar manager is you must accept the drinks. Now picture this, let's say one customer every hour came in and you're doing a 15 hour day, that's 15 beers. And if you did that six days a week, your liver and kidneys are going to be shot. And sometimes it was three, four drinks an hour, every hour. Have you ever wondered why the bar managers aren't paralytic and drunk and falling all over the floor well let me open your eyes okay <laughs> the secret when you bought in my bar you'd come in and you buy a drink so you had a bottle of singer maybe and you'd say to the barman barmaid get two of those one for the manager the in my bar my barmaids were tomboys I had one in the afternoon one in the evening night time and they would pre make drinks for me under the counter so it, one of the each bottles you know it was a Heineken bottle a Chang a Tiger a Leo and they would be bottles underneath they would have washed out and put soft drinks or bottled water in, then they'd have put the cap back on, banged it on, and it would be in the fridge on the one side, just for me. So if you bought me a drink, my apologies, in those years ago, but I'd have been hammered. So the barmaid, bartender, would pull my drink out of the fridge, pull the cap off, pass to me and then get the same for the customer now customers wouldn't buy lady drinks for the manager so they want to buy just a normal drink or the same as them so they would have soft drinks water under there for me there you go customer wouldn't know and they'd be charged for a full beer I would give a nod and a lot of managers do this would give a nod to the bartender if you wanted a full proper drink so maybe you know I'd have a few drinks anyway so you'd give them the nod and they'd know okay he wants a drink and they'd get me a bottle of beer now if customers asked for they were drinking shorts um, what the 10 bartender would do they would do it under the counter pouring the drinks and mine would be water or whatever nearest colour to the short would be. So a vodka coke, it would just be coke. It wouldn't be no vodka in there at all. And this probably goes on everywhere in the world maybe for bars. Because you couldn't drink all this alcohol. It would kill you, it really would. But we had this system now. The bartenders, because I had these two tomboys, they were a bit naughty and quite often for a bit of a laugh they would change the drinks what they put in my drink so it could be any sorts of soft drinks but they might drop a spice in there or something um, and quite often even they, they just play games a bit of tomato ketchup what can you do you've just got to drink it and I'm like okay you're up to something what's this <laughs> but that is a big secret in the trade because 
you just can't drink that much. So next time you buy a bar manager a drink, think about, hmm, get, watch the bottles, <laughs> watch the drink being poured, um, maybe swap the bottles, and then you'll get the bar manager drunk. But if you're a manager and you get hammered, you, you're just gonna sleep in the corner and the, you're not looking after the customer, so it's not good. So that is definitely the biggest secret I had as a bar manager. And I learned that from the other bars around my bar because I didn't know the first, probably first week I did the job, I was hammered all the time and that didn't look good. Yeah, so yeah, you know now, the bar managers don't drink alcohol that much. Not unless they really can hold their liquor because it's just too many through a day. And other little secrets, well, secrets, when customers came into the bar, you would, as the manager, pretty quickly be able to suss out if they're returning customers, they're new. Again, as the Thai girls do the scoring system, as a manager, you, what country are they from, what language they're speaking, how are they dressed, are they the beginning of their night now, end of the night, and you quickly weigh up the situation, and you then form a plan of attack with the girls. You pair the girls with a really pretty girl and a girl that's not so pretty. The one that's not so pretty is really good at games, the bar games. You know, she's an expert at Connect Four or Jenga. If you think this customer's gonna be quite, uh, spend quite a lot of money, you'll bring four girls and you'll give them a signal and they all move in for the attack they'll get the customer away from the front of the bar to the back of the bar so that his attention is not on beautiful women walking past and uh, different music out there to get that customer to try and forget about the world outside and lots of attention from your girls onto the customers so that you give them that feeling of feeling like uh, somebody really really special I mean they are they're your customers so they are special but you, you're just cheating a little bit by putting lots of girls onto them um, and the girls interact with the customers slightly different so you've got to weigh up the customers and uh, plan of attack you get the customers with three or four girls around them and get them happy and get a couple of drinks into them the manager will then pop in, have a free drink on me and make sure it's a very strong drink. It'll be a treble vodka. Because then if you get them a little bit drunk, there's a chance they're gonna stay in your bar. They'll then start buying lady drinks. So if your bar manager you walk into suddenly gives you a free drink, you know he's planning a way of extracting the most money possible from you. And this again, I learned from bars around my bars. And it's uh, widespread, uh, probably again, all the world. Keep the customer in the bar. With the customer in the bar, more people will see that and come in. And if you start running out of girls, then your mama son, if you are really busy, she will ring freelancers who are in the area and before you know it, backup comes in and the freelancers, and then you're giving them the kickback on the lady drinks, the 20 bar each. So they can earn money pretty quick doing that. And they've got no tie to the bar, but they're getting kickbacks. In my case, I had the two bars, but they were three quarters of a mile apart, one kilometer apart we could call girls from the other bar quickly to jump in a bar bus and fly up if we were quiet at one bar and busy in the other and that is a tactic a lot of bars use they'll borrow each other's girls if they're really busy and they'll, then they'll look after it they'll, they'll um, when the other bar's busy they'll lend them their girls so it yeah a lot of bars working together closely and a uh, little competition there, yeah. So there you go, there's two tips, 
two secrets I've told you. There are a few more, but not really interesting. But those two, if you're aware of those, you can maybe save yourself some money. And that is it with me and the potato bar scene. I'm not doing any more vlogs. Please, no more questions. Well, no more requests to do them. By all means, questions, I'll answer them. But uh, we'll let all the other vloggers do the, the bar scenes. And uh, I'll get back onto other things, other areas. Again, thank you so much for watching. Um, please share. I need one more subscriber to get back to that 100. <laughs> That's annoying me now. I can't believe that. And this is Simon signing off. I'll catch you on the next vlog. Bye for now. Ta-da.